Deep Japan by the last samurai staying home. Uh, tonight uh, I will cook Japanese food because I have to stay home. And um, actually, uh, Washoku Japanese food was registered as UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage in 2013. And uh, now it is a uh, main kind of a main reason for visitors to visit Japan. Um, my mother has a license of a chef and she loves cooking. So when I was a kid, small kid, elementary school days, I have to help my mother cooking every night. It was my house rule or something. So I learned a lot from my mother how to cook. And tonight I'm going to cook kaburamushi. It's my favorite Japanese food. Um, kabura means turnip. It's a kind of round radish. Uh, turnip. Kaburamushi. Mushi means steam. So steamed turnip. Tonight I will make it. That's my favorite and difficult one because um, if you come to Japan it's hard to find it because um, in a you know cheap restaurant they don't serve it if you go to um, exclusive restaurant maybe you can eat uh, kaburamushi so I'm going to try a hard one with ingredients you can get outside uh, Japan and I want to be the first one of the uh, recipe movies of Kabura Mushi in English anyway um, then um, I will wash my hands and start cooking Kabura Mushi cut the turnip before I cook I'll show you one uh, technique. Well, when I cook food, the sleeve, the sleeve of kimono touches food. You know, it bothers a lot. So, uh, we use this taski. Okay? This is called taski. First, it's easy. First, I will make a loop. Okay? Okay, now it's a loop. Okay? So put one hand through the loop and twist and put another hand to the loop. So uh, it's gonna be a number, number eight shape. Okay? And then uh, I put this cross point to the back. So now the sleeves are held by this tusky like this way. I can cook, you know, very freely. And the back side of me is like this. It's easy, so please try. So today we're going to use turnip. Two turnip. And this is the red snapper. If you can't find a red snapper, maybe you can use a white fresh fish like a, a codfish. Or if you don't like fish, maybe you can use shrimp instead and this is the uh, one egg white this is shimeji mushroom you can use whatever mushroom you have okay and some carrots if you have 
This is a soy sauce, Japanese soy sauce called shoyu. And this is wasabi, hot one. Uh, this is rice wine, sake. Uh, if you don't have sake, uh, instead you can use white wine. It's okay. Okay, uh, this is the uh, katakuriko. It's a uh, potato starch. If you don't have it, you can use corn starch instead. Later, we'll make a sauce of kaburamushi and this one makes the sauce thicker creamy this is the um, dashi powder if you don't have it you can skip it okay let's start cooking first uh, we put some salt on fish. On both sides, we put some salt on it. And uh, we'll leave it for 10 minutes. Okay, then uh, we're going to peel the turnip. Peel the turnip. It's better to peel a little bit thicker. And then grate two turnip. Yes. Okay, two turnip. Smells so good. Okay, this is a strainer. We put a grated turnip on the strainer. Because it's too watery, so, you know, so the water goes down, so it's too watery. Leave it for a while. And then, uh, beat the egg for a while. Now it's a white egg. Okay, this is enough. Uh, this is the uh, cherry blossom shape. Okay, I make two cherry blossoms with carrots. You don't have to. And then boil the carrots and uh, mushrooms for a while. Okay, if you boil it, leave it on the kitchen paper and dry it. Okay, and then boil the fish. 10 seconds. That's enough. Okay. And then Wash the fish in the uh, icy water. Put the fish in the uh, icy water. Okay. 
and wash it. Okay, that's it. Okay, next. Look, this is a turnip shape china. Okay, first we're going to put the turnip down there. First, like this. This is a turnip and egg. And then we put some fish. Fish layer here. Fish. Okay, and then we put some more turnip on the fish, and then next the mushroom on it. A mushroom layer and carrots, and then I will put some final layer of turnip and egg on it. Okay, it's ready. And this is, smells so good. It smells so good. Right, great. And then wrap it. Gonna make some hole. Make some hole. Okay. And. We're going to put this in the uh, microwave. Uh, five minutes. 500 watt. Okay, let's make a sauce. Uh, this is a soy sauce. One teacup of soy sauce. Okay, a uh, one teacup of rice wine sake. If you don't have it, white wine. Okay, and two teacup of water in it. Two teacup of water. And two teacup of water. And this is a um, potato starch. If you don't have it, use corn starch and put some potato starch. And please mix it. Oh, 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 I forgot about it. If you have a dust powder, put some dust powder in it and stir it. Okay, that's it. Okay. Put this brown one into the microwave. Now this one is really hot, so please add the potato starch or corn starch with water. If you add, it's gonna be a thick and creamy. It's a little bit get creamy and thick. 
Okay, it's ready now. Open it. Okay. It looks scattered and so please make it round shape again. Please make it round shape like this way. Okay? Like this way. And then please put this sauce on it. Like this. Okay, finally the wasabi. Put, put the wasabi on it. Done! This is Kabra Mushi, my favorite. Smells so good. Okay, this red table is uh, Urushi, uh, traditional lacquerware for special occasion. I'll try my kaburamushi. So good. Mm. But a little bit salty, maybe a little less soy sauce is better. How was my first uh, recipe movie, Kaburamushi? If you love Japanese food, try that Kaburamushi with a little bit less salt. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Cut! <laughs>